Story number four. Who's affected the most when wars break out or when a war breaks out? Now, I did some heavy, heavy uh, research on what happens when wars break out. What I've noticed is that there are some pros and cons about war. And that's why story number four has the ability to be a bigger story. Now, what usually happens inside of a war, inside of the game of war, is usually you find out new how new inventions work. You find out how things work. You find out how things can work better. You find out things about your opponent. You find out things about the world. You find out things about men. You find out about the character of your enemy, your allies, and you find out most about of, of everything. You find out how valuable life is. And the sad part about it is usually civilians and the people who are not involved with the war are usually highly impacted. That means they lose life. They die. There's also a story that made it in. So the U.S. slaps new sanctions on Cuba over human rights record and I guess support of Venezuela. So uh, the U.S. has been engaging in a lot of conflict on a global scale. And many people wonder uh, why they do the things they do do. Now, when you the reason why this story number four is at number four is because of the U.S. Inter involvement with Syria and how they all of a sudden just decided to withdraw and leave the Kurds by them to fight, and they left a few. Well, they 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 left. I think it was probably a thousand troops or so. Uh, the report keeps changing. They they've left troops on some groups troops on the ground. They're saying that they didn't fully withdraw. Some of these troops will be going to Iraq. So many people have wondered for years how this how war has affected uh, just America in general. Now America has been involved with quite a few world wars on a global scale. So you can't help but ask yourself is how does this affect the American people and how does it affect the world? So we, we when you see this story surfacing in, like uh, there was another story about how fight fighting is continuing in Syria despite uh, Turkey pa Turkish pause. So that means that Turkey is uh, still doing things. They're not looking at the, uh, this president as a legitimate reason to stop, even though he slapped sanctions on them. And you see Russia's involvement. So that means that these people are trying to get something out of the deal and they're using war to do it. Now, you may look at this as a short one run and say, okay, how is this affecting the American people or how is this affecting you? And then you can look at it long term and say, okay, what are what are what do these what do these world leaders see long term for their countries? They may see uh, as an as as an opportunity to get uh, a better deal on trade. They may see it as an opportunity to keep the to keep the United States from isolating itself or from getting too powerful. These are these are things that happen in the game of war. You could see your granddaughter get taken hostage in the game of war, and this is what's happening. You see people, uh, some innocent civilians, losing their lives. So you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, in a, in a story like number four is. Who is affected when war breaks out? And there are a lot of people affected because the ripple effect in time takes years and years, even sometimes even centuries to heal. You can even look at Egypt, okay? They are digging up Egypt's dead. This is an empire that la that was civilizations ago. Would Egyptian pharaohs have wanted their dead? Uh, now, Egypt was the, was the, was the faithful religion was the faithful uh, empire that that pretty much introduced the style of religion to the world. So, and they honor their dead by burying them. Now you see all of these professors, all of these collegiate people or academics going in and raiding tombs and digging up pharaohs. You see all new religious law against Egypt saying don't go in there, but you see all these academics going inside there. Now Egypt was was uh, was a part of a war. So when you look at what happens when these wars break out, you're starting to get an idea of what is happening 
on a smaller scale blossoming into a bigger scale. And that's why this story is different because when you're not in this battle, when you don't see what's happening in this country, when these people people's private lives are being invaded, their land is being taken over by rebels. This is what's happening when war it becomes well known or widespread. Dozens killed in Afghanistan mosque bombing. Mexico army deployed after police killed in ambush. There is a war even now in America or it's starting to die down a little bit, but there's still a war going on between the police, some drug lords, and criminals. If you don't believe me, look at the turn on the seven or the six o'clock news or eleven o'clock news, you will see that there are still things happening within this uh within this ball game. Syrian regime accused of do, accused of dozens being tortured methods from crucifixion to rape eye gouging these are tactics of of bad now if you're a religious scholar and you study the uh crucifixion of christ then this may touch you because it, it is something that that goes on every day with innocent lives you could even say okay why do you when you look at the history books you see people or african americans hanging from trees Folks, these are realities, and these are things that happen in war, and the sad part about it is they are still happening in real time today, and it's, it's sad, but it's a reality. You can even look at the Holocaust. You can see skeletal, skeletal remains in some of the books, and you can ask yourself, why do people do these things? These are people that use the tool of war or the atmosphere of war to push their agenda. And this is what people are afraid of. This is what happens in every civilization. When, uh, when a country's military becomes so strong, they are afraid that a leader will unleash that military upon the world, causing mass destruction, mass lives, genocides, crucifixions, stories. This, this is why story number four has the ability to get bigger. If you look at even when you take it to the pharaohs of Egypt, you see how they ruled how they rule the land. This is no different in today's environment. In war, graves are dug up, graves are burned, people die, civilians die. This is this is a reality, and this is why story number four has the ability to grow. Here the media, it'll be Brian West, where it's my duty every week to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories. If you want to be a contributor, help out anyway, M-E-T-H-O-D, the number eight, I-S-C.com. Method80.com, where you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor program. I constantly have to remind you that I'm just the mediator, staying in the middle, navigating the news from the left to right to keep you informed. If you yourself want to be a contributor and help out, it doesn't take much. Uh, I just do the legwork, just navigating, going through over 200 or more stories every week, just to, for you. The news, journalists, and the media, they deserve most of the credit, but I do most of the dirty work. That means I'm getting, I'm, I'm reading over and over again, going through article after article. So if you yourself want to be a contributor, it does not take much. I'm in here every week trying to find out what stories are, are more beneficial. So if you even want to go to the website, see the stories that almost made it in or the stories that did make it in, M-E-T-H-O-D, the number eight, I-N-C.com, Methodity.com, where you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor program. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The media is here.